You know, I thought we'd do something different. You know, now that I am uh, trying to do this full time, um, I I wanted to revisit the brick separators episode that uh, Derek and I did two years ago now. Can you believe it? September 8th, 2021. So two and a half years ago. Can you believe that? That is crazy how, how, how time flies. But, uh, you know, there's a wealth of information here in, in these brick separators. And I wanted to revisit this. I wanted to watch it. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I, why don't I do a react video to it? Could it be kind of fun to do this with everybody um, watching at the same time? Yeah, let's get started. I just wanted to comment on on this intro. I I this was like one of the first intros I ever ever did, and I loved I loved how it came together. This this video of Derek talking is from his one hundredth vlog that he did. He did like some some uh, hundred vlog special where he was talking about his experience and that. And so I just grabbed that and uh, made it black and white. And this was like some kind of uh, order pulling thing I did live. And it was the only thing I could find. <laughs> I was talking. I should have, I should have uh, uh, recorded something, but uh, it, it came out all right. I think I, I really liked how it came out. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Brick Separators. What's this? Episode six. I believe so. It is. Yep. <laughs> Holy crap. A half a year of brick separators. Can you believe that? We didn't miss one. We, we were close, but I wanted to, you know, I had off of, of my day job and I wanted to run the store as a full-time person. And I think that's what we're going to talk about today is, is like my experience doing that was very eye opening. Good right? segue like, there. You know, I, we, we all watch you do it and you see, you make it seem effortless on on your blog and i was like yeah why didn't you do that sooner um the amount of work you were doing before you went full-time like before your job and then i don't know after your job or during right. your job <laughs> is you know very like i i appreciate that a lot more now uh i i appreciate it even more now that i'm trying to do it full-time it is the amount of work that derek puts in um is unbelievable uh and, and even today like i'll check um, uh, new parts uploaded. Uh, there's a there's a screen in Bricklink. You can see, uh, you can put in somebody's username and then how many new lots did they upload. And he's constantly. I, I even asked him a couple times because I thought he was cheating. I'm like, are you doing unconsolidated? Because like I don't understand how you're getting all these new lots. But uh, yeah, I, I I think he's diving into used more, and so like he's got a lot more new new lots. But unbelievable how much work he he can get done. Uh, watching that but like while i was on on the vacation i was like okay how am i going to run this so i started thinking about like what are the the goals because i think you really need goals to do full times yeah. those goals were crap too especially today like the goals for like oh you've got financial security yeah well we'll just do upload goals or some something weird but uh i i, I think the goals are much different it's like what what can you put up for sale is going to sell quickly at a at a good price i think is a better goal than what i what i was doing back then initial thoughts there with you know like uh now that you've been full-time um for yeah five months. like like i hear that a lot like you know effortless it's not effortless obviously there's a lot obviously. a lot involved and i was working a lot more doing two jobs and that's what was broke the i guess broke the camel's back i needed to stop working so much mm-hmm um, I mean, this doing the Bricklink store and thing and, and stuff like that, selling Lego is probably three times more um, work and effort than my other job was, you know, so it's not like I, I, I did this to make it easier. Um, right. I mean, financially, it should be, you know, in theory after a while, but I think I had the same know, experience. So like, like you said, it is a lot more work. I knew that because I, I got the three months last last year, last summer, my job offered me to voluntarily leave for three months and I did it. Yeah. And and we survived on it. We you know, we weren't you know, I, I got no like unemployment or anything. It was just voluntary. So it was just what I was making. 
and it was it was a little bit of a struggle but I, you know it just, it's just learning it's a trial and error thing that we learn from that um you know and and that's why you know i i originally planned to work this whole year 2021 but you know things just uh, i just felt from that from that trial i did last summer i'm like no we can definitely do it we know we can do it just like at the level i wanted it to have my family like not for me not feeling pressure i have to work all the time and my family you have the time with the family and not having them be like you know where's dad going yeah <laughs> after work you know so you know, you got to have the a budget you got to have restraints and specific times for things and and you know i haven't worked a sunday in many many years at least two years now so that's always been there but um yeah you just got to figure it out um it, you know it's not a, it's not an instant thing as as you can see my process uh, through my vlogs how i documented right. all that it's mm -hmm. not instant you can't just decide i'm just going to sell lego for a living it's not that easy for sure not that easy i i want to comment on a couple of things he said there like he said you have to have a budget you have to restrict things and i didn't understand this at the time right like i was like yeah you, d you do but now that i'm full-time yeah the first thing that we did last month was uh estimate our bills uh well I've, i i did that before that beforehand i was preparing for this i knew it was coming but really like we we put together okay how much do we are we going to need to spend this month? And we put that together quickly. We figured out where everything was bleeding, uh, where all our money was bleeding out. And uh, we started cutting back on all that. So um, there was a lot. And, and we're still finding things that are just, it's just bleeding out. Um, and we're just, we're just cutting, making, making good choices. But like, yeah, um, what he says is is still true today, you know, and, it, and and it's affecting me now more that I'm full time than it was back when I was like working two jobs. I think the yeah. first thing that I experienced when I uh, when I started uh, was how long it was taking me, and I like it never really sort of affected me before because like I knew I was going to do like a bag or two a day you know, put it away and then come back another day, you know, and that I had my part out in a way so that I could do that. I was so terrible at, at this. Like I had no idea how bad I was back then. Um, I, I mean, I, I still think I'm really slow at parting out and putting away, but back then, like just hearing me say, I'll do a bag or two a day is like, you have no idea. Um, and it wasn't going to affect anything else. Right. But so the first time I did a part out, I did it that way. And it took me 12 hours. And I think I was talking about this last time on, yep. on brick separators. And the first thing that came to mind was like, I got to do this faster, right? Like it's got to be done faster. And so, uh, you know, that was, that was the first step. The second step was like, it's so, it's so funny. Cause like, I see this. I think the, the best thing to, to get faster is to, have somebody that is faster and part out something with them. So having Eric from Eric's World Brick Shop come two times now and help me part out stuff and just watching his process. The first time he came, I I made him do it my process. And I was like, eh. and towards the end of that visit, I was like, just go nuts. Do it, do it the way you want to do it. And I was like, holy crap, that was that was fast. And the second time he came, I was just like, I couldn't really help him much because I was I was actually tied up at work for quite a bit and then I just let him go and I sort of watched him from afar and I picked up a lot of tips from him that that last time so if you can do it try to part out with somebody else and see how you know try to learn how they're they're doing it it's lots of little things that you got to pick up on this on everybody's vlogs now like they're all talking about it um is <laughs> pulling orders faster and like right what, what's your target you know and i yeah. i came up with some like three three lots per minute based on something you said in one of your vlogs and somebody made a comment like when i was showing how fast i could pull orders and i was timing them and calculating off camera no math on the camera anymore <laughs> <laughs> um it's about accuracy like they they said I, i'd rather really have accurate that. be at more accurate than beat speed that, that i'm like then that is true thing. um because in this, you know, you want 
to, you know, you're providing an experience for somebody when they buy your, your parts for BrickLink, they, they need it for a certain project most likely. And they, you know, they expect to get everything. And that is, that's definitely the case. You got to keep that mindset. And, you know, I mess up on orders a couple of times a week. You know, I just don't put the right quantity and I, in my, you know, I just, okay, I'll send it out to you unless they request a refund for it. I have no problem doing that, but I always send it out. Um, you know, um, uh, but accuracy is something you just got to keep in mind. Uh, really started putting more time and effort into eBay. Um, right you know, putting, putting more minifigures there. And that actually at the beginning was very time consuming. Um, you know, I, I had a, a sort of stockpile, like a little bit like what you have in the back there. And, mm -hmm. you know, i I found it wasn't organized the greatest and there was taking a lot of time there. So I had to switch that up. Uh, but that, that still takes quite a bit of time to like, it is one of the reasons why I, I ultimately stopped doing it. It took way too much time. It cost way too much to build the figs and the fees were killing me. And I don't, I, I gotta say, I don't know if I actually made any money. I think I just was spending my BrickLink money constantly to, to feed the eBay store. And I was constantly chasing eBay. I would get sales easily, but there had to be a better way to get, get the product out there i had i wasn't tracking good financial stuff and i and ultimately I, I decided to stop it and i think i was making more money after i stopped it uh just because i wasn't incurring a lot of expenses i wasn't placing a lot of bricklink orders for minifigure parts and i've got tons of minifigure parts still hanging up on the wall there that i can i can list at some point uh when i need to so I spent a lot of extra money just to build like a, a library of minifigure parts. Like, well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about finances a little bit um, because that's, that to me is like a bit, a big thing, right? Like brick arena talked about, he had a really great video a couple months ago talking about his being full-time for a year. And to be honest, I didn't even know he was full-time because I yeah, missed the, I missed, I missed the first step first video where he said all the things that you know led up to him being um full-time and the struggles he was having right and one of the struggles that he was having was he had a really good salary from his previous job and so like yeah. he would never never have entertained going full-time unless those circumstances happened to him same with me i'm probably in the same boat right like i'm never going to replace my my salary right you know, with, with this, it's just not going to, I'm not going to replace my benefits with this. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing holding me at my day job is the benefit. Yeah. That was the hardest thing was trying to find health insurance after, after, um, I went full time and my wife did an amazing job. Um, I think we wound up getting Medicaid, Medi Medicare, um, based on the salary I was making at, uh, at Ralph's Bricks. Let's, let's get real right like i think right. i can make the money it's the benefits um uh so so that's that's a key thing right like how do you know like how did you know you were ready financially to to take that step i think we've talked about this right i think that's a key yeah. thing like where when do you think you're ready to, to go full time is it i'm gonna answer this now that i know it uh make uh, figure out what your bare minimum expenses are personally. So what are your bills? What, what, how much do you need to pull in to, to eat, to pay your mortgage, whatever you need to do, figure out what that number is. Once you have that number, once you can make that amount of money in a month and still bring in more inventory, then you're ready. Is it an abrupt, you know, end of, end of employment or is it what was the in your case you were like okay i'm ready i'm gonna quit my job and and do this what was what was that caveat well i mean i guess it's the seeing the the income and the sales and the profit gains or whatever the cash flow in and out um i mean this year uh compared to my, my salary at my other job i'm gonna be doubling that in, in income so it's that was that was the decision i'm like well, we can pay for our own health insurance. We can pay for dental insurance and get, get our own life insurance and all this stuff. So obviously money is the biggest factor. 
um, to know if you can do it by seeing it and, and recording it. So just keeping track of your expenses, you know, like you said, you know, it's eye opening with sometimes when you see, um, cause I mean, I have to use all my profits to live off of, right? So it's, it's not always, it's, you think like, oh, I sold this for a whole bunch. I got all these sales this week. Like, well, we got to pay, pay this right. and this. All right. Um, I don't recommend going into debt, doing something like this. Um, because you, you know, this is the statistics on small businesses that fail. And I think this is more brick and mortar store type businesses because th that has a lot more expenses than doing something out of your home. Right. Yeah. So that is something to consider. I, a dream is to have a brick and mortar store, but I don't like I having think, the, um, the time obligation. I got it. I think everybody's had that brick and mortar store dream and I, I wouldn't get into it now. I think, I think it's oversaturated. Um, I, I just, I wouldn't consider it. I don't know. I think you get a brick, bricks and minifigures in your area. They're just going to kill you off anyways. So, and they're, they are constantly expanding. I would definitely not consider uh, a retail store right now. To grow my store, it takes all of the capital that, that comes into yes. my store, right? Like it takes a lot of capital and like, even in your sales uh, store recap videos, you, you see that you're spending a lot of, a lot of money lot per month. I still am struggling with that. I am spending just as much as I'm bringing in and I'm growing the store, but like, yeah, I've transitioned a lot to buying, um, a lot more minifigures now and hoping that will, um, bump things up. I am also, uh, this is something that big B bricks and I were talking about. Um, one of the, one of the philosophies that I learned from, um, Chris at Bricks on the Dollar back in the day was his pricing method was six six months average plus one penny, and the one penny was to get the um, one penny doesn't really mean much to a customer most of the time, but the penny will is enough to drive six months average prices up instead of always the race race to the bottom. And if more people did that, I think um, you know there'd be we'd all be in a better place. Um, I think instead of fighting for all of, all of the orders, but, um, yeah. So like we should all be doing that six months average plus one penny just to be driving the six months average price up per month. But you're right. You're at this point where you're also getting a lot back per month, um, so that you can live off of that. I'm getting, not a lot per month and I'm spending, <laughs> it feels like I'm spending yeah, a lot for a lot per month. Right. And I'm like, sort of like spinning my wheels, like just sort of, uh, doing the work and not getting, getting much out of it. So th there, you know, there's, you, you talk about having the capital on hand. Um, and yes, that's a big, you know, you need to have that capital on hand plus you need to figure out what your salary you want to pay yourself, plus how much you need to have on capital on hand. I think. Right. I, I, was, I, was, I was running by some stuff of my, from, with my wife before this. Like, what do you think about selling full time? What, what are some things like, why do, why does it work for me? Mm -hmm. And she's like, it's personality. Like you just are a person that go, go, go. Like if, yeah. if I'm not down here doing stuff and I'm just doing it upstairs, I'm always running around the outside, um, you know, shooting yeah. baskets. I cannot sit still. I, you know, I get about six and a half hours of sleep on a good night and I'm okay with that. If I get six hours, I'm a little bit slower, but six and a half to seven, some days on Sunday mornings, I sleep about probably seven and a half. I'm just up at five 30 or six, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that yeah. to me is like, I'm envious of that. You being able to like jump. Uh, what, what's your typical time going to bed? Uh, I'm usually asleep in no later than 10 30. Okay. Um, okay. Well, between 10 and 10, 10 30. Yeah. Something, something like that. I think the earliest I go to bed is like 11 30. And it's like, yeah, that, that to me is like crazy early. I think this is key, right? Like we're, this is a big thing that you, you need to consider how much sleep you're getting, because that's going to dictate how much energy you're going to have the next day. When, are, when do you want to start when you want to get, get your orders done so that you can, you know, maximize your time during the day. So going to bed at, at a reasonable time, getting up early, getting your orders done as fish, fast as possible, and then being able to use the rest of the day to 
part out, to upload, to do do as much as you can. And then trying to get some of that rest of that day uh, to yourself, some personal time. It's all, it's all key. I think the other, other key part that we don't talk about here is exercise. You need to be in shape. Um, and I'm not in shape. Derek's in shape. I'm not in shape. And so that's one of the reasons why I built this gym uh, that's over here onto the side is so that I can get some exercise in, get some weight, lift some weights, do some cardio. It's all for the store, right? It's f- uh, my health, but getting me healthy enough so that I can – I can do this uh, in longevity. So I think that's all key stuff. Don't, don't make excuses. Um, You know, make sure you answer questions or resolve problems in a timely manner. There's no reason that you shouldn't be able to, because you, you know, unless you're not seeing them, obviously sometimes you just don't see them, but if you have notifications on your phone, you got it. Um, You know, it's just one of those things and, and you're building, it's your reputation too, right? Don't, don't sell junk parts and then pretend that they're good and say, no, that's, that's your problem. Like just resolve the problems and yeah, just take responsibility and no excuses. It's like, we've done a whole episode on this. I I think, I think the one other thing I'd like to touch on with um, going full time that I, I, I felt, um, you know, I, I work all day in front of the computer, so it's very, very poor health. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's funny. Working when I started the first couple of weeks, I was sore. Like my back hurt, you know, right. like my shoulders hurt. Um, my, <clears throat> I would wake up and my legs would go, be screaming at me and going, not again. No, <laughs> not another day. <laughs> but uh, towards the end of it, like I, I actually enjoyed it. Right. Like yeah. I was, I was in coming back to work and sitting back. I, I think, just to that point real quick about being sore. Uh, I've worked hard since then to try to figure out like how to set this up so that it's comfortable. Um, and I've done a lot of experimentation of like the table, raising the table on stilts, um, you know, being able to sit down, that kind of thing. I think the desk that I'm sitting at right now is a standing desk and I have three different settings. One for, where I'm, when I'm sitting down at, at the computer, one when I am want to stand at the computer, and one when I want to part out. I've got it at the right height for parting out. And so I will part out here and turn around and put the cups on the table behind me. And that's been working really well. And it's good, too, because i got the computer in front of me, so I can, like, throw a show up on there. I can throw YouTube up there. And I'm parting out while it's right there in my face. So experiment with, like, the right height, the right table, the right, Cause that I was sore because I was leaning over farther than I, I should have. I, I wasn't sitting down. I, I was, I had really bad tables at that time. Um, and so that's, that's a lot of what contributed to too much sore shoulders, sore back. Uh, it was just not, not being ergonomic. You, you got to think about that goes those kinds of things too. Back down in this chair again for as many hours a day. I hated it. I really hated it. I really wanted to just be down running around, you know. And I think that's also another thing that, um, you know, full like one of the benefits of being full time, you know, is you're like you're at the mercy of your own destiny, right? Like you right. you can you control your own destiny of what you're going to do, and it's more satisfying, um, you know. Like when I when I was in the middle of it there was a week where the orders were dry. Right. And I was like, I was like regretting like doing this. Right. (laughs) And then I went, I went back to work and like the orders exploded. I'm like going, this is reverse. Like, this is not how I wanted it to happen. (laughs) But it's funny because like when I, when I first started full time, you know, like I needed to wait till I was getting the benefit of uh, all of the uploads that I had. Um, It took about a week week and a half for things for the the orders to come in at a pace that was better than that first week that first week i was in panic mode because i was like how am i going to do this the orders aren't coming in um and as i was uploading more and more um orders started coming in but like it took a month of real work for me to see enough 
orders and it became very satisfying right like it's starting to slow down again now because i'm not working on it as much keep but uploading like if i were to keep up that level of of work and see the return i was getting after i went back to work right you know like it was so satisfying to see that like i could i could almost like if i could double that or even triple that amount that was coming in i would almost consider like going full-time at that like it was that level of of good yeah. uh, although i think i would have needed another level above that just to pay for the, the more, right yeah, the more, was, more stuff that came out, out. But like, it would have been point, at a level where i think i would have said it was not at that level started to really consider it you know you get back whatever you put into this you know that's yeah. that's the best you could you could you could have that slogan down anywhere in your room wherever you're working you get back whatever you put into it you know, if you're uploading a ton, you're going to get it back, you know, things like that. You're up, you know, sending orders out fast, you're going to get repeat customers. So you can put that onto anything during, to, you know, with this and it's just good piece of advice. Yeah. I think that's a show. I think that's where we should, we should end that. We get back what you put into it. I think, uh, I think that's good. Let's, uh, let's, let's recap. I think be a good good time to try to recap what we learned here i think i think the main things that we learned is um understanding your finances um before you know if you want to go full-time you need to understand what your what your um monthly expenses are personally right like what do you need from the business to be able to live um a life, right? To be able to pay your bills without going into debt, uh, that kind of thing. Under, understanding that, um, cut, you know, cut the bleeding, uh, stop the bleeding where, where possible. Um, before, you know, when I was working a, a high salary job, we were bleeding everywhere and we just never noticed it, right? Because we were just constantly putting money, putting money into it. Being mindful of your time of, uh, you know, like, treating it as a job, uh, we said, and, uh, trying to maximize the efficiency of, of everything, right? Like, um, your health, how you have things set up, that kind of thing. So I think that's, that's that, right. You know, running, running the store will take care of itself, but it's like the mindset of your finances, tracking everything and getting everything set up so that you can do it in an efficient way and that you're health, healthy about it. So, all right, guys. Thanks. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Well, wait. This isn't the end of the video. There's more. We got to tell them about the society. Yeah, joining the Brick Separator Society gets you access to secret society videos like how-to videos on how to run your business on BrickLink and BrickOwl and eBay, as well as Ask Ralph videos, and maybe our sales reports. You might see all of our numbers. Join today.